and we're working on that, um, getting that real-time information, whether, you know, Michael Jackson yeah. is in school or not. Uh, but a great partnership with the police department, with the local police department, helps you, helps out a lot. And, you know, and, and, and the students begin to see us as, you know, service providers rather than, you know, law enforcement. Not because an occupying army. Absolutely, yeah. and that's very, that's very, and I, I tell my deputies, we wear browns, we wear the brown professional uniform in the school, not the blues or the blacks, because we're not occupying, we're not an occupying force, we're a service they provider, and it's, and, it, and, you know, professionalism, it's about attitude, it's about attitude. I was just thinking that when you were talking about the, uh, the budget from 17 up to 35, that's, and in, in especially in these times that yes, are not really good. That's a great piece of work, but uh, just historically, and you were probably just a child then, but Jerry and I know when we had a sheriff who had <laughs> helicopters and he had <laughs> tanks, and I can't remember the guy's name, Kersey. but he was Bill Kersey. Kersey, Bill Kersey, <laughs> and Sheriff Kersey had, I was, uh, I was in, uh, I was going to Dematha then, and in Hyattsville, he seemed to have a, a heavy duty location, and I used to marvel that, Hyattsville and Prince George County could probably take on some of the small, small rural countries. countries. Luxembourg <laughs> versus Hyattsville. Sure. Well, well, what was funny about that is, <laughs> is, is, is while I wasn't around when Sheriff Kersey was in office, uh, uh, having worked, uh, uh, been a part of the legislative committee for the Fraternal Order of Police, uh, which I was a president three time elected, I served in Annapolis and, and we were fighting those those occasions that Sheriff Kersey you know, made we, contact with our citizens, actually our, our authority was stifled because of that. Well, you had to go, oh, sure, sure, yeah, oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Because yeah. we wanted the submarine, they felt that was excessive. <laughs> <laughs> that was, it was <laughs> <been> good <laughs> for the yeah, so much. One of the <laughs> very remote Blades, predecessors Blades. before your time got angry with me because I said that he had more cells in his jail than he had in his brain. <laughs> <laughs> and then when I was in law school, which tells you how long ago this story is, uh, Dean Isaacson taught uh, domestic relations, and the and the adultery case we read was called Blankenship versus Blankenship, and the correspondent as well. He was one of the sheriffs in one of the counties, and he was investigating a case in Mrs. Blankenship's apartment between the hours of one and three a.m. and so forth. <laughs> <laughs> but now it's been very professional. It really has. Well, I think I think you know, the also the sheriff uh, has been under 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 our leadership and my leadership. We wanted to make sure that it was the true community police. Mm -hmm. Sheriff is yeah. the people's police, you know, elected by the people. Right. You know, from Nottingham, you know, everybody knew yeah. the sheriff, sheriff and the sheriff knew everybody. Yeah. You know, and and we believe in today's technology. Yeah. If you touch the community, you can you can make that happen. And what's most important is is I believe that. Uh, in order for Prince George's County to move forward, we need to have a county executive who creates a government and creates that atmosphere uh, and that environment that, you know, the, the public feels as if it's their government. I think what people don't know, and because we gather for pizza every Friday night at uh, yeah. T.J. Elliott's, a very popular restaurant we should, in town. Well, you've been there. We know that uh, you're I there. I just left there. I love that place. Oh, yeah. yeah. And you're, you're familiar. One of the problems we face is that public officials above the municipal level often get kind of remote as to Bowie. Like somehow, even though he's majority leader, Steny Hoyer is always here. Yeah. Right. But we, we don't, sometimes we don't see our officials at the upper uh, higher level. And I know that uh, if you like T.J. Elliott's when you're a citizen and when you're a sheriff, I'm sure that, you know, the same way. But we, Terry and I know, and I guess many of the people out there don't know, uh, Michael Jackson is a guy we see an awful lot around Bowie. Absolutely. Well, and I think, that's I so think important. it's important. That is yeah. really important that the people in this community where we've lived forever, know who the candidate is and see him in process Absolutely. doing something here in the community. It's Absolutely. a remarkable thing here in Bowie, the yeah. U.S. House Majority Leader, how often Steny sure. is in Bowie. He's yeah. never missed a Bowie Memorial Day and parade. We, yeah. we oh, it's a great parade. Oh, well, yeah, we, <laughs> put him, we put him down, at, and we put you, I put you down as a friend of the city of Bowie, you know, a friend of the people. Well, you can learn a lot. See, I'm an origin person. You know, you need to learn the origin of the growth of Bowie. How did Bowie become, you know, what Bowie is today? Well, I was here uh, when there were 900 people. Wow, wow. And, and I can tell you that, uh, you know, it has given me some perspective on my future leadership of this county and how you do it. It's a common focus. Charlie Callow was the treasurer of Prince George's sure. County. He said Bowie would be a better place. No, it was, it was the head of the airport, the, the guy, Ben the Woodward. Of ben right. Woodward said, Bowie would be a better place if they got rid of the jackasses and brought back the thoroughbreds. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> for me. Yeah, Levitt, uh, Levitt was moving in like 50 people a week here for 15 sure. years. Wow. Wow. So it went from, in 10 years, it went from 900 to 30, 40,000. We're, wow. we're almost 50 years here, 48 years. Uh, next year, I'll be here. We were here before streets. Sure. Wow. Streets weren't paved. Wow. And the, uh, you had, uh, you had uh, four, four businesses. That's all you had. You had a, uh, a, uh, a card shop, a, a, a grocery store, and a liquor store, and there was one other, there was one other store. Marty's card shop, drug store. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, I spoke at the first one why the town took on. The first business to open here was Charlie Gentile's Liquor Store. And then Levitt put a sign up on Route 450. On this site, a Roman Catholic church and elementary school will be built. And with that encouragement, the <laughs> Irish poured right in. I know, I know the Gentile uh, family very well. I can tell you, you know, being born and raised here in the county, uh, I, I watched the growth. Yeah, I'm 46, yeah. but I've, I still watch the growth. You know, yeah. the, the old sheriff's office in Upper Marlboro, yeah. Head Start and Kindergarten is where I went there. Okay. You know, oh, I didn't know you were a native son of that. Absolutely, I'm native son. I'm the only one in this race, sir. Where were you born? Where were you born? <laughs> uh, Upper Marlboro, uh, oh. you know, Chevrolet Hospital, of course, but Upper Marlboro, right at 301, just right next to the service station at uh, Main Street in 301. My grandfather right. had a farm yeah. there. Yeah, my first five years of my life there. Uh, then we moved to uh, Walters Lane in Forestville. Went to Crossing High School, okay. you know. Well, and, when uh, I first came Asia. to the county in Terry, urban Prince George's County started at Mount Rainier and it ended in Hollywood and College Park. Wow. Up, up Route 1, right. and everything else in the county was rural. Yeah, That's right. yeah. And Mount Rainier was right on the district line. I lived in Mount Rainier okay. when I moved down from New York. I was about 10. And Mount Rainier was a great little town. A lot of uh, government workers right. were there. And Jerry's right that the streetcar stopped there. And if you were going out, you could actually go by rail out to some of the other places in wow. the county. Yeah. When someone mentioned to me about moving to Bowie, and I remember as a kid playing football in Bowie, I thought, oh my God, that's the in the, the boondocks. Yeah. Why would yeah. I ever go Well, when we came, there was just yeah. nothing. I mean, that's it. it. Yeah. If you wanted a pizza, you had to go down to it was on the Enterprise Inn. Yep. Um, you know, there was um, yeah. you know. Right. I think Prince George is rich in history, and, and, and one of the things that uh, I think our young people have missed is, is the history of Prince George's County. Yeah. Well, you know? you've got a, you, how old are you, Mike? 46, 46. So you remember another Prince George's County? Absolutely. Yes, I do, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, I certainly remember another Prince yeah. George's County, but yeah. I also remember the opportunity given me, you know, coming from where I came yeah, I from. I came in 1959. You know? And, yeah. uh, you know, to, to uh, I tell young people all the time, you know, if I can come from a farm with no running water and uh, a mother with four young people uh, on her own, and live on Walters Lane, carry lunch tickets from Head Start at 12th grade, and become the sheriff of Prince George's County, and soon to be, you know, the county the executive county of this county, exactly. there's nothing they can't do. Uh, and so I want to make sure that we instill that can-do attitude in our young people, because we have so much to offer. We're bright, bright, ego, yeah. you know, uh, energetic, uh, talented young people in this county, and uh, for too long we've, uh, we've allowed that to lay dormant, so we've got to re-energize. Well, I, I believe that. What about... In the campaign, uh, you, you've been at it for some time. As you say, you're <laughs> sleep deprived, but you're in the campaign. In going around through the county, in this, your assessment, uh, and what do you think? Of, what do you think of, of you, your chances? How do things look as we clo we're closing out? Oh, yeah, a couple oh, we're of weeks definitely. Away. We're 20, 27, 28 days out. I think yeah. uh, the chances look, look great. I mean, I've run countywide twice. I'm the only one who's run countywide twice and has won. Countywide twice, uh, you know, 2002. And you have a name you remember. And I, yes, I have a name to remember. And he wears uh, with two gloves when he wears gloves. <laughs> he, 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 yeah. he has one glove, but yeah. he doesn't wear it. <laughs> yeah. The and, only and, legislative and, body in the world that doesn't have a germaneness rule on uh, in amendments is the United States Senate. The joke is that that uh, senators think Jermaine is Michael Jackson's brother. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it takes to get me elected. But look, yeah, I, I, uh, but, but having been elected twice countywide by the citizens of this county to serve in a countywide office, to lead an office, first of all, it's an honor, and I don't take that lightly. Right. Um, and and uh, I am, like, uh, you know, blown away with that and the ability to and the opportunity to serve the citizens of this county. Uh, and so I think that gives us a tremendous opportunity. Uh, because we are known, there's no jur there's no uh, community in this county that I have to <coughs> introduce myself to. I have to reacquaint Amazing. myself. But I've been to every community. I've I've been engaged yeah, you know, with our the, young people. One of the things you've done kind of well, and an area I'm kind of interested in, 
um, is uh, you certainly have reached out to the, the growing Hispanic community. The absolutely, Latinos. absolutely. You have Spanish-speaking sheriffs. Oh yeah, oh yeah. We have, we have uh, absolutely. And I think we we've, we've got to become, uh, you know, it, it, every citizen deserves to be served, and you really right. can't serve any citizen if you don't understand the citizenry. Yeah. And uh, and uh, we, you know, our diversity is is key for us, and it's, uh, and I think that uh, our growth in Prince George's County. Uh, is only as, as, as great as, you know, uh, the culture that we have. We have a great culture here and another, great diversity. Another area that I have a particular interest in, Terry gave my biography in terms of veterans. I'm vice chairman of the uh, Veterans Affairs Commission for the county. In the county. And yes. we have the largest number of veterans of any subdivision. We have almost 80,000 veterans. Yes, sir, 77,000. 77,000, absolutely. You got it right. Yeah. And uh, any, any thoughts on this uh, that you'd like to give, Mike? Absolutely. Uh, uh, we need to we need to make sure that it doesn't become a project that we deal with because we have you know there, we have veterans in, in two theaters. We need to make sure that it is a service, and we need to take advantage of the federal government and and others who want to help out with our veterans and make sure that it's it is key for them, uh, and not let that slip by the wayside. Uh, it can't be a project; it has to be a service. Uh, veterans. And then the diversity in the veterans community, like the DAV is a little different. A lot of the other veterans organizations, realistically, they tend to be a lot of old white guys. Uh, the DAV is a, is a very ethnically, yes. like our, even our commission, uh, Fred Nordhorn is on it, who's a, who's a Native American. I mean, yes. So, and, yes. Uh, we've reached out in lots of ways to uh, people like that, and that's what, you know, my, my concerns are in those areas. You know. Absolutely. Well, I think, you know, we, we all have a place uh, and, and we've all served our role. You know, I'm a member of 275 post, so, you know, you're a former Marine, yes, sir. Oh, you're, oh that's right. Former that's Marine, right. the that's Marine Corps right. leader. There, oh, there we go. go. Commandant. Well, he was in the Army. He couldn't <laughs> get in the service. <laughs> <laughs> I was in well, the Army. Well, well I think, I think it's, uh, but I just think it's important. It, it, we must make sure that the what? services we provide are a service and make sure that we get the proper funding and resources. When were you in the Corps? I'd forgotten that. 82 to 83. 83, 83. I want to go on record as saying, when we're getting a wrap-up uh, signal, that as a veteran, uh, as a veteran, I came out with a good conduct medal and the National Defense Medal. Neither Jerry nor the mayor <laughs> have a good conduct medal. And I just want to go on record saying, despite my service, <laughs> Good conduct. Man. I served twice in the Marine Corps, but I never served three consecutive years. I want to let the record know that it was not because of something I did in the back seat of a car. But, uh, yeah, I, was just, I just came back. I took a tour uh, last week of, uh, and by the way, the Marine Corps now has an all-press campaign going. You must call it Camp Lejeune. There are signs mm. everywhere, and uh, it's uh, yeah, that's the new new okay. Marine Corps. Okay, listen, that that's got to be it, Jerry. But Michael, thank you very much. Thank you for very coming. much. And. Uh, I wish you, you having me. I wish you well in, Thank you very uh, much. in the next couple of weeks. I think you'll do very well, but uh, good luck. And Thank uh, you. I like most of the things that you say you're going to do or try to do. And I think I would venture to say a lot of people are in your corner on this uh, Well, this I appreciate event. that. I appreciate that. It's, uh, okay. Simplify. 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 <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Marine. You're surrounded, Jerry. <laughs> yes. I give up. <laughs> It's, Thank it's, you. It's, it's like uh, Jesse Pulley. I've got this this uh, picture at home. Jesse Pulley says with a caption, um, "We're surrounded." Uh, what does he say? <laughs>